what percent of hello aliens would be able to talk to us in our language? So this is the question of communication. It actually gets to the nature of language. It also gets to the nature of how advanced you expect them to be. So I think some people see that like we have advanced over the last thousands of years and we aren't reaching any sort of limit. And so they tend to assume it could go on forever. And I actually tend to think that within say 10 million years, we will sort of max out <laughs> on technology. We will sort of learn everything that's feasible to know mm -hmm. uh, for the most part. And then, you know, obstacles to understanding would more be about like sort of cultural differences, like ways in which different places had just chosen to do things differently. And so then the question is, is it even possible to communicate <laughs> across some cultural difference distances? And I might think, yeah, you know, I could imagine some maybe advanced aliens who just become so weird and different from each other, they can't communicate with each other, but we're probably pretty simple <laughs> compared to them. So I would think, sure, if they wanted to, they could communicate with us. So it's the simplicity of the recipient. See, I, I tend to, uh, just to push back, let's, let's explore the possibility where that's not the case. Can we communicate with ants? I find that um, like this idea that... We're not very good <laughs> at communicating in general. Oh, you're saying, all right, I see. You're saying once you get orders of magnitude better at communicating, once they had maxed out on all you know communication technology in general, and they just understood in general how to communicate with lots of things, and had done that for millions of years. But you have to be able to, this is so interesting, as somebody who cares a lot about empathy and imagining how other people feel, um, it's, communication requires empathy, meaning you have to truly understand how the other person, the other uh, organism sees the world. It's like a, a four-dimensional species talking a two-dimensional species. It's not as trivial as, to me at least, as it might at first seem. So well, let me reverse my position a little because I'll say, well, the hello, hello aliens question really uh, combines two different scenarios that uh, we're slipping over. So one scenario would be that the hello aliens would be like grabby aliens. They would be just fully advanced. They would have been expanding for millions of years. They would have a very advanced civilization. And then they would finally be arriving here, you know, after a billion years perhaps of expanding, in which case they're gonna be crazy advanced at, at some maximal level. But the hello aliens, about aliens we might meet soon, which might be sort of UFO aliens, and UFO aliens probably are not grabby aliens. How do you get here if you're not a grabby alien? Well, they would have to be able to travel. Oh. But so they, they would oh. not be expansive. <laughs> so if it's a road trip, it doesn't count as uh, grabby. So we're talking about expanding the colony, the comfortable colony. So the question is, if UFOs, some of them are aliens, what kind of aliens would they be? This is sort of the a key question you have to ask in order to try to interpret that scenario. Um, the key fact we would know is that they are here right now, but the universe around us is not full of an alien civilization. So that says right off the bat that they chose not to allow massive expansion of a gravity civilization. Is it possible that they're, they chose it, but we just don't see them yet? These are the stragglers, the journeymen, the... Uh, so the, the timing coincidence is, it's almost surely if they are here now, they are much older than us. They are many millions of years older than us. And so they could have filled the galaxy in that last millions of years if they had wanted to. That is, Isn't they, it they couldn't just be the, right at the edge. They're very unlikely. They, they, most likely they would have been around waiting for us for a long time. They could have come here any time in the last millions of years and they just chose, they've been waiting around for this or they just chose to come recently. But... The, the timing coincidence, it would, it would be crazy and likely that they just happened to be able to get here, say, in the last hundred years. Uh, they would no doubt have, have been able to get here far earlier than that. Again, we don't know. So this is a friend like UFO sightings on Earth. We don't know if this kind of increase in sightings have anything to do with actual right, visitations. Right, I'm, not about, I'm just talking about like the timing, like they, they, aro they arose at some point in space time. Yes. Right. And it's very unlikely that that was just at a point that they could just barely get here recently almost surely yeah. 
they would have but they might have they could have gotten here much earlier and well throughout the stretch of several billion years that earth existed they could have been here often exactly so they could have therefore filled the galaxy long time ago well, if they had wanted second. to let's push back that's on that question. that's what, what the question to me is isn't it possible that the expansion of a civilization is much harder than the the travel um the sphere of the reachable is different than the sphere of the colonized. So isn't it possible that the sphere of places where like the stragglers go, the different people that journey out, the explorers, is much, much larger and grows much faster than the civilization? So in which case, like they would visit us there's a lot of visitors, the grad students right. of the civilization. They're like exploring, they're collecting the data, but they're we're not yet going to see them. And by yet, I mean across millions of years. The the time delay between when the first thing might arrive and then when colonists could arrive in mass and, and do a mass amount of work is cosmologically short. You know, in human history, of course, sure, there might be a century between that, but a century is just a tiny amount of time on the scales we're talking about. So this is, a, in computer science, there's ant colony optimization. It's true for ants. So it's like when the first ant shows up, it's likely, and if there's anything of value, it's likely the other ants will follow quickly. Yeah. Relatively short. It's also true that traveling over very long distances probably one of the main ways to make that feasible is that you land somewhere, you colonize a bit, you create new resources hops. that can then allow you to go farther. Many short hops as opposed to a right. giant long exactly. journey. Exactly, but those hops require that you are able to start a colonization of sorts along those hops, right? You have to be able to, to stop somewhere, make it into a way station such that you can then support you moving farther.